What's up, guys? Welcome to the Live Composing Show. My name is Stephen Malin, and I hope you're having a fabulous Thursday. I know I am. I've actually been up for many hours. Um, it's 12 p.m. here, Eastern Standard Time in Atlanta, Georgia. I actually had a, a fun 3 a.m. meeting this, this morning uh, in Germany. Well, through, you know, video call. Um, I got to talk with some game developer friends, um, which was 9 a.m. for them. So that's just part of being a game composer, right? We get to work with people all over the world. Some days we need more coffee than others. So I'm super excited, though. I'm, I'm kind of on that caffeine buzz where I want to write some music, and we're going to have a lot of fun doing it together. Hope that that uh, you're ready for today, because anytime we get to talk about Final Fantasy, I'm a very happy dude. Uh, Final Fantasy is absolutely the most influential at least musically, it's the most influential series of my life. And I, you might even, you might call me dramatic or I'm exaggerating, but truly it was uh, the Final Fantasy IX and Final Fantasy X soundtracks that in some ways, maybe I'm, I'm being traumatic, dramatic by saying it saved my life, but it, it certainly it, it inspired a passion and a drive within me to become a musician and then a composer. Um, that was the music of my childhood that absolutely paved the path of what I do now. It inspired me to learn the piano. It inspired me to start writing music. It inspired me to pick up more instruments. It inspired me to join orchestras and sing in choirs and play in percussion ensembles and learn ethnic instruments and study jazz and study orchestration. And like this whole, like, like path, my entire life trajectory I owe to the Final Fantasy soundtracks. So it is deep within me that I, I desire to give the utmost respect and homage to my heroes. Um, and it, it, anytime I get the opportunity to work on anything Final Fantasy related or anyone related and, and, and a part of the Final Fantasy franchise is just a dream come true. And um, today, um, although this is not a paid gig, this is obviously um, of my own accord. This is my own fan music. Uh, but today we're going to be tackling Strangers of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin, which is a super campy, goofy, ridiculous game. And musically, I'm going to treat this very similarly to how I treated the Fire Emblem Warriors stream from last week, where it's kind of anime orchestral rock. Um, and I want to try to infuse some live elements today with some live guitars with some live bass, maybe even some live violin if it's appropriate and we have time. Uh, I'm just really excited to just jump in and and give my best effort 
to not necessarily sound like Final Fantasy, but to write in my style within that universe. And obviously this is a spinoff series, this is a spinoff game, it's not a mainline entry by any means, but it still deserves the same respect because the, the, the franchise is just so beloved and, and so influential in my life. And I've, I've deeply enjoyed playing just about every Final Fantasy game in existence. So I've missed a few, but I've hit all the mainline ones at least um, multiple times. And I'll say it that Final Fantasy IX, I said it in the chat earlier, that's definitely my, my desert island Final Fantasy game. If I could only pick one, I like a lot of them, but if I could only pick one, it'd be Final Fantasy IX because it's just so great. Um, so I want to take a minute before we jump into the actual writing process, I want to remind you guys that today only, so for the next 24 hours, um, the Video Game Music Alliance is open. We're not open very often throughout the year, and you hear me talking about it all the time. Um, it's a group that we started back in January. It has grown significantly. We have a ton of members, dozens and dozens of members now, and man, we're active. We are crushing it. Um, it has been an absolute beauty to behold the friendships that have come as a result, the business progress, the composition, the production, the technology, like everyone is growing so much. And I don't want you to take my word for it. Um, there's a lot of um, pro members that are actually inside the chat here right now. So if there are any, anyone hanging out that wants to just drop a word about your experience in, in BGMA, um, I think we'd all love to hear it. Um, but nothing but extremely positive things to say. We do a lot of stuff in there. We do courses, master classes, live Q&A calls, um, VGM composing challenges. Like it's, we're active. We do a lot of stuff. Uh, but it's not just to be busy, but rather we get real experience working on real things, real results, real people, right? Uh, I, I'm not about, I'm not a BS person. Like we're going to talk real talk. I'm going to push you. We're going to really strive to get better. Um, I, just, I don't believe in wasting time or money. I don't believe in... Um, you know, it's not for everybody. It's for people who want to take this seriously. So if you just want to kind of sit on the sidelines and if you just want to hang out with us and join us on, you know, the live composing show every week or come join the free discord, just kind of be on the sidelines, check it out. Nothing wrong with that. Um, that's more of a hobbyist perspective, but if you want to turn this into a career and actually make money doing it, um, come join the group because we're serious about it and we're getting serious results. So, um, as of right now, today on Thursday, July 7th, uh, 24 hours remain that you can do a three-day free trial. So literally nothing to lose. Come check it out. You will not be charged until the end of those three days. So you can leave. No questions asked. I'm not going to chase you down. Um, just come check it out. Come take the courses. Come jump into the master classes. Come ask your questions. Come check out the people. Vet us out. Make sure we're not creepers. Um, <laughs> that's what I would do. That's what I've done. Anytime there's a membership, I do not join memberships unless I can go in there for free, go check it out, make sure it's good. And it's not just a bunch of hot air. Um, and it's real, real people, right? Um, cause if it's not real community, what the heck is the point? But I hope that those of you who've been around for a while here on the show, you've, you've gotten to experience even here, we have a really awesome YouTube community. So, um, even, even right now I see Will, I see Alan, um, Matt, a few others that, that are inside the group that are kicking butt. So I'm so excited. Um, so without further ado, let's write some music. It's going to be a really fun one today. Um, I grabbed a battle clip and let me pop out of full screen mode here. I maybe kind of like last week, I got a little carried away. Sometimes when I just start writing, I don't want to stop. And part of, you know, preparing for the stream is I have to like load instruments and stuff. So sometimes I get a little too inspired and just kind of, you know, start writing and maybe I got too carried away, but I have like 16 bars of music. Whoops. Um, but the goal today is to only write one minute of music and to write a loop. And I want to stick with that Fire Emblem Warrior style, which is the orchestral anime rock. Um, some of the sample instruments I'm using today, if you want to check them out, I'm trying to get better about this. Look in the description below here on YouTube and you'll actually see all the instruments that I've already pulled up and am actively using. Some of them include Ministry of Rock 2. And this is for electric guitars, electric bass, and drums. I used these exclusively in the live stream last week. Um, if you don't play guitar, if you don't own a guitar, this is really the best thing you can do, minus hiring someone. Thankfully, I do play guitar, at least mediocre, 
and I can record today and, and I'd like to, you know, if we're going to use these as like MIDI mockups, I still might play in something. So I know what it sounds like on the keyboard and then I can go back and, you know, play the thing. So I was experimenting earlier with these green tracks here are, are me playing a live guitar and live bass. So I just want to kind of experiment today with how much of a quality jump we can actually reach by playing it live. And I would encourage you guys to do the same where you can, but I will definitely be doing sample drums because, well, I don't have a drum kit here and I'm not good at drums. So <laughs> sample drums have come a very long way and still sound amazing to me. So I'm going to use the Ministry of Rock 2 cymbals. Um, and you'll actually notice that right now on Best Service, which is uh, an affiliate program that I'm a part of, I'm an exclusive artist with them. So what that means is um, whenever they have sales, I like to tell you guys about them so that you can get the discounted price at no additional cost to you, but it actually supports the channel here, which I think is super cool and kind. Um, so just so you're aware, Ministry of Rock 2 is on sale, 40% off. Uh, best service this week. So look in the description below and you can click on that link and that will support the channel. Um, a couple other things I'm using, I'll definitely be, be using Requiem Lite, which is an ancient plugin. This thing is absolutely super dated, but it still sounds amazing. A lot of fun. I love just like choir shouts. Not that high. It's a freaking good plugin. It's one of my favorite plugins of all time, and it's just so old. But but the good stuff never gets bad. It's not just because something's old does not make it bad. So don't make that mistake. Um, strings today, I'm rocking you guys. I mean, you guys already know what I'm going to use. If you've ever watched me write music, like I have go-to instruments for a reason because they always sound good together. Um, I'm, this is one of my favorite patches ever. It's eight Dio Adagietto. It's actually, their probably the most inexpensive string library out there, but it's fully fledged and has so much good stuff. Um, and I like to use the close mic, sometimes the far mic. And today specifically, I'm slapping an over-the-top plugin, OTT. This is a free plugin from Xfur, so go grab it right now if you don't own this. This thing will make your strings pop, 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 really, really hot in the mix. Right? Now, it sounds pretty terrible by itself, but that's kind of the point meaning it's supposed to cut through the mix. It's not supposed to sound real. When you produce music, you're not trying to sound real. You're trying to make the whole recipe, right? The whole cake taste good. It doesn't really matter what the ingredients are so long as it tastes good. So... So that doesn't sound super realistic, and in large part, because I have the speed knob turned really high, it compresses the junk out of the attack and the release of the samples, so it's not going to sound real. But instead, it's going to sound mechanical, which I know those of you who have been to music school, you just got to kind of unlearn some of that stuff. <laughs> because in the producing world, it's not about making stuff sound real, it's about making it sound good and full and rich. If you want to go record an orchestra, go record an orchestra. They're going to sound amazing naturally because it's, you know, real people. But uh, we're not going for that sound. We're going for polished, produced, modern, slick, professional, high-paying, right? Like we're going for polished stuff. Um, besides that, I'm also rocking Tokyo Scoring Strings. That was such a hit last week with um, the Fire Emblem. So far... I've only found one very strong reason to use Tokyo scoring strings, and that is for the legato violins and, you know, any of the legato instruments. They're so good. So you have to also realize that there's a speed knob here for legato speed. So you have to know if you're going to write fast or slow notes and you have to kind of change it to based on what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. 
And I said this last week, but this is the exact Japanese ensemble that records for all of the major video games, especially anything Square Enix related or anything, uh, basically anything Nintendo related um, or even Sony. Like they've recorded on all of the major anime kind of um, shows and, and video games. So why not use the exact musicians? It's just so, so clean. And what I'm going to do today is double the lead guitar melody that we'll record later or maybe use what I used, what I played earlier. Um, and we're just going to double that sucker so that it's very full and rich and we'll be good from there. Um, uh, brass wise today, I'm rocking eight, uh, what is it called? Uh, Cinebrass. So Cine Samples, Cinebrass. Some of these patches require you to hold down the sustain pedal to get legato. And again, here's the same situation where this is a brass patch that doesn't sound super great by itself, but when you start doubling it, it cuts through the mix and it's loud and powerful. This is the kind of thing that when you start doubling it with horns and, and legato violins and, and guitar, it just has this big, powerful, in-your-face punchy sound. the exact same instrument. Um, this is Cinebrass Pro, horn ensemble. Same thing for low brass. Monster low brass. So good. And then I'll also use them for longs. Like that. Um, the only effects I have going on today, I have a reverb aux, which is 2C Aether, Hall 2 set to 100% mix. And then I have a strings aux, which just means all of my um, strings are connected to this, um, this one patch, this one aux. And you can see that over here, it says strings aux, strings aux. So I haven't even done anything with it yet, but uh, oh, yes, I have. Over here in the sends, I've made my reverb a send, and I've made a send for the brass. So this is just a really, really smart way to save your resources and make everything sound like it's in one room. Have one reverb, and everything's just being sent different amounts to that reverb. And that's one of the best, easiest ways to make your orchestra sound more realistic because we're, we're putting everything in one room. So with all that... Um, right before the stream, I started chugging some strings and I just wanted to rock on this, this little ostinato idea. I've already played it, but it's... That kind of thing. I do want to start in a lower register. I mean, look at this game. It's so over the top. I love it. So we're going from G minor to B flat to E flat, C minor, D minor. So the D minor turns into a D7, uh, which is a D, F sharp, A, C. Five, seven chord. If you study any music theory, you know that that's the most powerful tension chord that leads us back to the one chord, which is G minor. The only thing that's actually more powerful than that would be a diminished seven, which would be an F sharp seven chord. Which we could do, but the major equivalent would be a 5-7. Right. Alrighty, and, and just a disclaimer, I have not played this game yet. It looks amazing and I'd like to play it. There is a demo out, I think, that you can play for free. 
Square has been really, really good and gracious about doing free demos for basically all of their games, if I'm not mistaken, for the last couple of years. So if you haven't played it yet, it's on PS5. I don't have a PS5, so maybe it's on PS4, but I think it is a PS5 exclusive. Um, so I don't plan on getting one of those anytime soon, but you know. liking this groove and it's a nice fast tempo it's at 170 bpm 4-4 time and i intentionally wanted to do a groove that doesn't feel like 4-4 even though it's in 4-4 and we can achieve that by using what's called syncopation syncopation it's when you play accents off the beat so one two three one two three one two three one two three one two one two one two three one two three one two three one two three one two one two so even though there's eight eighth notes in a bar um, it just means that we're going to do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. And it allows those accents to give us a two bar cycle. So this is just one of those tips for writing ostinatos that are interesting and not overly repetitive. And you just, you could put, um, I'm treating it like a, a two bar phrase and, and you could even call it an eight bar phrase. So. Anyway, so with that, I want to double those chords and I want to write a melody on top of those chords. So let's start doubling. So the first thing I did is I actually picked up my electric guitar behind me, which let me show it off back here. I don't ever talk about my instruments, um, but I have a beautiful um, a Fender Strat, American Strat uh, that I'll be playing today for electric. It's a beautiful um, cherry red. And then also have a, a Warwick bass, a rock bass, um, with that low B string, five strings, and it's it's really meaty and, and lovely. So it's perfect for this style, for this genre. I don't I don't pick it up enough. I need to play it more. Um, but for today's purposes, <clears throat> there's an old trick in Guitar Land that when you record guitar, uh, if you want to get a nice fat stereo rhythm sound, you can record the same line twice but we're gonna pan it left and then pan it right. So I actually did two takes, and here's what it sounds like. Here's my left. Uh, I have to start soloing some stuff, hold on. So I just walked around those chords, power chords. And all I have here is guitar rig, ram fire setting, pure ram fire A, which is a nice fuzz. Turn it off, it sounds quite bad. So that's the left side, and then I did a second recording of the right side. So the trick here is now that we have two of these, they sound okay if we do 45 degrees left, 45 degrees right. Sounds pretty good when you play them together. It already gives so much beefiness and it's so clean. Um, and that's the beauty of recording real things is they're clean. You're not, you're not stuck with MIDI. But there's one more thing I can do here and that is EQ. Yeah, you have to forgive my camera. It's on a timer and I have to learn how to fix it. Um, so what I wanna do is do a Pro Q, which is my favorite EQ, because it's visual, you can actually see it. I'm gonna grab a Pro Q on both my left and my right channels. The trick here is to make one of the sides high end and the other side low end. So here's what I mean by that. We're going to take one of them and kind of scoop out the bottom kind of boost the high, and then we're gonna do the opposite curve over here, where this is gonna be more of the low range, and then we're going to take away some of the high. So they should be basic, basically inverses of one another, and what this does is it creates left channel, right channel, it's gonna create a whole lot more stereo interest than without EQ, so here it is with them. <laughs> And I'll, I'll turn them off just so you can hear the difference. So 
yes, as Michael says in the chat, I'm cutting mids without cutting mids per se. Yeah, basically. Um, Because I don't want to get rid of the mids, but instead I want to create uh, stereo fatness, stereo width. That's what we're going for here, but it keeps it clean. So there you go. Um, That's a trick that I find very fascinating and it's going to really make everything feel fat. So let's just start layering some stuff. So if I take that and layer it with the strings you've already written. Sounds pretty cool to me so far. There we go. Oh, there we go. Um, so just add some more fatness. And you can do that with MIDI guitars too. It's just not gonna be as effective. Um, just a nice little way to get some more pop out of them. Um, okay, Micah, I'm gonna take your suggestion because he works with guitars more than I do. He says to still in these um, in these EQs, he's still suggesting to take a little bit off the mids because we're working with orchestra. I'll take, I'll take it. Let's make sure they're even. So they're both negative 2.2 dB. Sure, why not? It probably will help um, a little bit more clarity out of these strings. I like it. Now, let's also layer in the bass. So the, for the bass, I grabbed my Warwick and just recorded those boom, 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 boom in the background. And I used Guitar Rig 5 as well, which is like an amp simulator. So in here, I chose the setting DI bass, direct in bass, which is exactly what I did with my, um, my active inbox, active DI box. Um, and here's what the bass sounds like, very simple. I also made a point because I have a five string bass, I wanted to use the low B string to hit some of these lower notes. So that way the guitars, which have to go up in the power chords, the bass goes down. Adds a lot of fatness. You hear a lot of rock and metal music. A five string bass allows you to go to those lower register notes instead of having to go high. So it just adds more. It's kind of like the same thing of using a low C on um, a double bass. In the orchestra, it just allows you to get that lowest register possible, nice and fat. So besides that, um, I haven't done much else. Uh, I did like fake power chords in my MIDI. I mean, listen to the difference. Isn't this crazy? Live versus, I mean, I'm not going to trick anybody, but like live versus MIDI. Here's MIDI. Sounds cool, but it's not this. Because there's there's some sloppiness and it it, it works. There's some humanity. And anytime you can record live, you should. Uh, it just helps. Even the bass. I mean here's a here's a mini bass. It's not bad. But even when you just compare them. And actually that one needs some serious help. In the EQ land. Um, right now it just has like, like some little buzzy fuzz. Gosh, that's so much cleaner. Now listen to it with these. Sometimes a little EQ can just save the day. Cool. 
Uh, that's in good shape. So let's go from there. I want to try to put some kind of melody on top. I was just kind of goofing around for a second and wrote this little super high guitar lead line. Even if I did take that, also just for experimentation, I wanted to see what it sounds like doubled with the first violin. It sounds pretty cool. an idea right um, but you see how effective that can be uh, man, I'm gonna take all the advice from Micah today because I just feel like he knows what's up with uh, guitars he says some compression and saturation is useful with rhythm guitars too if you want to process them a little bit more um, I think I might do that let's try um, so let's go back over here hey I'm all for learning and, and getting better so I don't use guitar terribly much um, so let's try Pro C, which is our compressor, and let's actually see what they have for guitar. Cool. I like that. It helped just to kind of keep them contained a little bit more. Um, yeah, and I'm all, I'm all for getting better. And I'd love to, to uh, Matt asked the question, Michael, what do you use to saturate your rhythms, your rhythm guitars? I'd love to learn as well. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not even sure what I know what that means. Unless you're talking about like EQ or distortion. Anyway, let's move on. I think that's super cool. Oh, decapitator. Yeah. I don't even know if I have that. Yeah. What would be, uh, I don't have decapitators. So what would you use for, um, that's a sound toys plugin. What would you use um, as a, like a, a general or like a default plugin? I think I have, uh, I have something. I used to use on my bass. Um, I want to look over here. You guys can look with me. I have so many plugins. Sometimes I, I forget what I have. There is a, is it Kush Audio? No, it's called Kush Audio. I just don't remember the name of the plugin, but it's definitely a saturator. I bet that would be super good. <laughs> I just don't even know where to look. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Sound Toys is pretty, pretty awesome stuff. Um, Good night. When you have too many plugins, you don't even know. Um, da, no, no. I don't even know what it's called, guys. But if I find it and think about it, maybe I can do it. Yeah. Usually, you know, they sort by um, company name, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Something in there would probably do it. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on that. Let's experiment. Uh, I'm going to pull out the guitar. See what little melody we can come up with and try to double it with the strings. So here we go. And while I'm doing that, a lot of you talking about the Final Fantasy X battle. This sounds like that. I'm very, very curious why you think that sounds like it.
I mean, I can't deny that I'm influenced by Final Fantasy music. But maybe that's a nice, a nice little nod. <laughs> All right, let's get this thing loaded, locked and loaded here. So I have guitar rig hanging out here. Has a nice little delay on there called Delay Man, twin delay. Let you get a, get a look at this pretty thing. Do, 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 do. Let's see how this goes. Let's just try to write a little line on top of there. kind of lean in that direction of like the octatonic scale because that's just my favorite scale ever. Some, got some stuff there. <laughs> oh man, this is fun. I don't do this enough. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna record a few different lines. So we have some options. And I'll mute the one I don't like. And just kinda roll with it. Hey, there's an emoji just for my strat. That's cool. helps so much. I'll turn my click on as well. at guitar, but I can hold my own, sort of. playing so high. <laughs> but I like it. I, I think it, it just kind of warrants that because it's so ridiculous. Um, and knowing that I want to double the strings, um, you know, with first and second violin, it could actually work. I think that's my starting note. Here we go. So 
one more pass, one more pass, and we'll just kind of call it a day. This little melody, dude. Let us continue from there. I think it's a, a, a good starting spot. Oopsies, my cord got tangled. Oh, the joys of live recording. It's a lot of fun. Has its own, you know, its own sift of problems. But um, to me, you know, whenever I get to record a live instrument, I always write differently. Like, I a melody I write in guitar is going to be very scale, like very what do you call that? Scalular, like it's very uh, linear. Um, I try to keep within like five notes or ten notes. Um, but like a keyboard, I'm going to be way more. Um, bold in my decisions and sometimes it's nice just to write something a little bit more singable and playable I guess all right let's play around yeah let's do a little bit of audio editing here splicing here One of my favorite parts of doing multiple takes is you can kind of create your own mega take I do this a lot with guitar because I'm just not that great at it um, I'll just start combining takes <laughs> stuff together like this.
of ourselves a little line here. So what I'll do here is just go through and delete the, the takes I don't use now that I've spliced together a nice little ditty here. Now, let's go through and actually play in the first violins. Oh, Matt, there's always MIDI. double. Take all of those and make sure that they're all it's basically all quarter notes, I think. Last thing here is I'm actually going to quantize uh, this little chunk of audio into quarter notes. Seems like this part was early. Now I can take the first violin and literally double it down here. Turn my grid back on. Uh, double it into the second violins and just jump the octave down. Here we go. Now let's add some brass in there. Okay, Matt Lewis asked a fantastic question about what what uh, chords is the strings playing? G minor, G minor over B flat, G minor over E flat. G minor over C, and then D7. So, this needs a horn melody. I like this melody. 
cloudy a lot now. <laughs> cool. So I'm just I'm layering stuff, right? I'm trying to keep it as practical as possible. Oh, I'm gonna make sure that my horns are pushed back a little bit, negative 70 milliseconds, so that they can really be on beat. Well, for what it's worth, I have a lot of experience with Final Fantasy music, so whether or not it's ever intentional to emulate that sound, so much of my life has been inundated with that style and studying that style and doing covers of that style and working in that style. So um, I like to think that that one day I could have my name on a Final Fantasy title and that would be the greatest joy of all time. Uh, and I'm working towards that. Even if it's Final Fantasy 20, I'm coming for you. So here I want to get some horn ensemble as well. Oh, I hate Final Fantasy 15. Hate it with a deep, deep passion. Final Fantasy chords. I want to try to get some nice horn goodness in here. Six four, right? Yes, I did it again. It's just the best time signature, guys. It just is, okay? Um, <laughs> it's inevitable. Everything I ever write turns into six four at some point. Uh, I am gonna move this up here. 
totally unintentional, but I like it. Let's do, oops, I don't know why I said 6-4. Six, 6-4 four. Six, four should be here. 6-4, we'll call this the B section. Get some nice different groove in there. <laughs> Do it. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. So we'll do a five, four bar here. We're gonna call this B2. We'll go back to six. Hemiola, which is a, a two feel in the time of three. This would be a fun part for this uh, strings. So. What's up, Chris? Chris, see you's in the house. So glad you're here. He's one of my long-term collaborators. He's a, an amazing orchestrator and arranger. If anyone does not follow Chris on his channel, go do that right now. He has an incredible YouTube channel where he teaches orchestration and sample libraries and all sorts of stuff. So loud. So this is a very Uematsu thing to do. Is to get some uh, half steps, almost like Psycho Bernard Herman. So I feel very strongly that we're going to have to go into some synth territory here to really make this what I'm hearing in my head, to really keep in that Final Fantasy vein of like a synth arp. That's totally, oh, I love I love that change of pace. That's going to be really, really slick um, to go from 4-4 to 6-4. So let's experiment. Like it needs to be a 16th note. I mean, I'm thinking prog rock here. That's really the, the name of the game. Anything Final Fantasy related. Oh, come on, where's my sound? That's pretty cool. This is straight up what Uematsu would do with Black Mages. It's all synth based. He's a keyboardist. <laughs> I 
<laughs> and I can EQ it to, to make it fit better, but I like that a lot. That's pretty slick. Uh, let's get those on the beat. That all looks good. Let me clean up the ends there. Make sure everything is like directly on the beat so the synth harp works. Obviously, this is not fleshed out yet. Oh, I, think, I think I made a mistake. I think I boosted the mids when I should have boosted the high. Otherwise, it's never going to cut through. I'm going to start um, layering in some stuff. So much fun this is gonna be really good um i have so many ideas and i don't know which one to write so i'm just gonna go with what is closest <laughs> My favorite things to do with choir is to have a pedal. What am I doing? There we go. Yes, this is Requiem Light. It's my favorite choir patch ever, and it's one of the oldest in existence. Anyway, what I like to do with uh, my choir is I like to have the bass chilling out on the, the pedal tone, the G. And then I'm going to move around minor and major chords in the scale, uh, mostly a minor one, which is a G, a minor seven, maybe a, an A7, B flat seven. Just keep that G in the bass for tension. You can, just, you can go as long as you want on that G. It's going to create a ton of tension, which is going to loop us back eventually to the beginning, which kind of relieves the tension with a cool melody. So... And it also keeps us grounded when all this chaotic stuff is going on around us. By the way, I'm super excited. I get to record choir again in August and brass and strings for a project. I'm so pumped and I can't wait to tell you about it, but I can't. I just can't. But I wish I could. Or 
horns right here. So. so even on the final chord, I'm still going to do a G. By tonality, A over G minor. what I want. Yeah, I've, I've made my appeal, Micah. I have, I've, I've, I've mentioned it multiple times. Please, 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 if you can get clearance to share this with everyone. I know it's super valuable. Um, these are very expensive sessions, and I, I want you guys to be able to be a part of them. Um, but I don't hold the power at this point. do that'll do boom boom let me do quarter note cool here are some of the bad notes the midi the midi mistakes Um, now you gotta start filling out some stuff. Get the right drums here. This is such a cool moment. Hooray! 
yeah, that's a very Final Fantasy thing. It's just to go absolute ham, prog rock all the way. Like, if there's one thing about Final Fantasy music, is it's it's eclectic and it's bold. Like, it it is what it is. It doesn't try to be anything else. It just it's its own weird smattering of genres. <laughs> What do you mean by that? <laughs> or a uh, Jew, you said, it is what it is, Stephen, 2022. Oh, I missed a snare. There it is. Ah, no cowbell. There. That sounds so cool with the um, synth. Finish this phrase. Ba 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 ba. Ah, there we go. I need these double drum. There. Cool. I need to make sure the choir actually stops. It seems to want to be sustained. All righty, all righty, all righty. You're making good progress. Uh, let's get some cymbals and crashes inside, or some hi hats rather, into this cymbals, into the drums. Just enough drumming experience to be dangerous. So I understand how they work. I just can't physically do it all the time. Um. So this desperately needs some guitar action. It's got to figure out wh what's going to happen where. This, this is still so unpolished. Um, so maybe. That's pretty cool.
Let's do this. This is one of those quantize everything one way, which is going to be eighth notes, and then go in and dequantize anything that's a sixteenth note. So these moments, anytime there's a stack, I'm going to. It's called dequantizing or, or requantizing to sixteenth notes. Just those select notes, so not everything is off. So it's time to get some G, G power chords in here. Give me a sec. Let's do it. Hope you guys are having fun. This is a very different stream. I don't usually play a lot of guitar on the stream because it's a uh, time suck, but it feels like today we're actually making some good progress. Maybe because I set it up in advance. That's probably the smart way of doing it. Uh, this is just the left side. So let's get it in there. One, one, two, two, one, two, two, one, two, two, one, two, one. <laughs> You're right, Michael. <laughs> I can count that fast. Let me see what the time signature is so I don't completely screw it up. It's the G power chord. Oh yeah, the um, I have to follow the brass. All the brass. Just gonna deselect everything. some palm moots. Trying to. <laughs> I'm not the best at guitar. That's all right. That's a tough line to follow, but it sure is fun. Ah, yeah, it's in 5-4. Uh, this will sound cool when it's done. It's not a triplet, but it, 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 it's a hemiola. Cool. Hey, Alan, if you're still in the chat, uh, one of our new members, in, Alan Mills, inside uh, the VGM Alliance, um, 
he just joined and he was sharing some of his battle tracks and maybe I'm inspired by that, but it's all like just chugging guitar, super JRPG. And maybe that's just fresh on my mind. I'm, I'm very inspired. So there you go. It's nice to have friends in the VGM business. We all inspire each other. Hooray, I did it. Now, I'll mute that one and do the other side. So you guys can enjoy the the right side of the of the stereo spectrum. Now remember, they have these have different boosts and um, pulls on them. Cool. Uh oh, did I detune it somehow? That's not the same pitch. explain why it sounds funny. What the heck? How's it even possible? Uh, let me just reset. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> it's detuning what I'm doing. I don't know why. That's eh, fine. You don't have to see me to know that I'm mad. Hmm. Explain yourself. What have I done? Uh. Somehow, my pitches are not in tune. <laughs> I don't understand. These are identical. It's not this. I don't think Pro Q has an option to change the pitch. Am I losing my mind? Let's listen. in tune and then all of a sudden maybe it solved it wow that's a mind flip Man, I'm recording so much today. But it's fun, it's fun, 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 fun. 
So here's what it sounds like. I need to take these and uh, clean them up ever so slightly. So it sounds like with the stereo image. to record bass. Mwahaha. I love me some bass. All right, friends, you having fun yet? All right, where are we? We're on a G. Love it. Oh my gosh, I love playing bass. It's so satisfying. Here we go. I have to do like a, a nice pitch slide at the end. Such a battley theme. this uh, like this as a little a little flavor a little spice and then I'm also gonna quantize eighth notes because they're all every third eighth note they're all quarter dotted quarter notes da, 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 da. Syncopation. I don't love working with audio and Cubase, but it it's doable. Sometimes it's just easier to work without a grid on. Sometimes you can even take individual notes like this, 
Just slide them where you want them. I'm happy with that. Uh, is there any more bass stiff? Bass is really early versus the MIDI, so I'm just going to slide it all over. Cool. It also sounds like my rhythm guitars are real early. Kamehameha! It, does, it is starting to sound like Dragon Ball Z a little bit. That's the Umatsu thing I was talking about.
live elements just they allow for so much more space to do stuff. Yeah, I just want eighth notes. Kind of stabbing on top. <laughs> Okay, it's getting very thick. Too thick. Okay, so I feel like I've created the B section, or the, at least the A2 section. So I feel like it would be important to create 16 bars. Let's see how much is left in our minutes, so 20 seconds worth. Let's see how much is there. Uh, yeah, I think we need to create 16 more bars right here at the beginning. I'm gonna just call it, where is it? Edit, let me find my range here. We're gonna go 17.1. I'm going to insert silence, this range, insert silence. And now I'm gonna create an A1 section which is gonna be more or less the intro to all of this. Because this just really needs some love. It needs, it needs to build into that. If that's like the big climax moment, then we need to build up to it. And that's where I think the drums will actually do better. With the toms as more of an intro or maybe even just because the strings here are too quiet because they're too low in range this works perfectly for an intro Creates, creates a good loop. But then when it gets here, ah, bummer. So I, looks like we need to move everything one more bar over. No big deal. There we go. Cool. Now everything's ready to go. Looks like that's it structurally. means this part now needs to be higher in the string register. This is the A2.
guys, about 75% there. I think this comes in a bar early now. That's what we need. We need some kind of a uh, stroke. Like something. Let's get that guitar back out and let's uh, let's keep jamming. Yeah. You guys up for that? A little bit more jamming. Fun day so far. For this one, I'm gonna to need to change some of my settings. I'm gonna call this one like distorted. I wanna find a new setting in here. Something that's gonna really, really be crunchy.
maybe this is a situation that we just need rhythm. Like this. I'm on to something here. I'm happy with that. Less is more here. Let's do less. Double the bass with low brass. Try to get this sucker filled in.
think the brass should be there. Maybe here. I don't know. I'm just, I don't want to get too much happening. Copy this into the trumpets at least. I can do that. Octave higher. Now we're getting to those finer details. The track's basically written, but we've got to figure out the rest of the production, huh? here. These are all quarter notes and need to be quantized. I try something guys like can we experiment Since we're already kind of in experimentation land let me experiment with something this could be a total bust it might be but what if it's a win what then it's gonna be sick hey what guys uh, I'm gonna take a very quick coffee break I'm gonna go grab my violin um, don't go anywhere. I'll be back in like two minutes, two, three minutes, and we'll be back to finish up this stream with some fancy violin recording. Okay. Don't go anywhere. Bye.
Welcome back, friends. This is the Live Composing Show. So glad that you are here today. We've been knocking out some Final Fantasy Origins, Stranger of Paradise. And today, well, this part of the stream gets to play some violin. It might be a complete disaster or it could be super cool. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun. I think we're really close to finishing this track, but I, th I think either we need to get a nice solo violin melody at this beginning part of the track or some kind of like aleatoric uh, tremolo kind of effects that we can throw in there. Just kind of give more of an orchestral edge since we have so much rock stuff going on with the guitars and bass and drums and everything. So I think this will be a really cool addition. Um, so without further ado, let's do it. Let's get this sucker in there. So I took a second to tune my violin. So at least it's sort of ready. So I'm going to be over here. here. I have to turn my microphone off so that I can start playing. So let's just fiddle and <laughs> fiddle around and see what happens. Hello. So the first thing I do, I know my mic sounds weird. Uh, it's an instrument mode. I'm going to put it, let's do some reverb. So my secret to recording is nice 45 degree angle directly above the F holes, about two feet away, thereabouts.
I'm going to try to do some cool delay thing. Let's try putting some distortion on that violin. places.
experimenting. We have enough material. Uh, a lot of that was just experimenting, but I feel like we have enough material now to actually do something. I like this idea of kind of moving around a little skill. And then I could double that with a uh, horn melody, actually. That one. getting there guys uh, sometimes you just gotta experiment and try new things and see what happens <laughs>
into like uh, almost Final Fantasy 13 style battles. <laughs> See, now I actually have a melody, sort of. It's like a counter melody. So I'm going to say this is a uh, tremolo. I think I need to do one more where it's actually a melody. Melody for reals. And we'll just do like up the octave. Um, that's really going to sound like, like FF13. FF I'll get rid of all the effects. Okay. Somebody's ready to be done. So it starts on an A. Mm. Wait. Thank you. 
I am officially done with the recording because I'm just done. So let's see if we can make any sense out of this stuff. Not my best, but not my worst. The goal is just to get a melody in there that can be doubled and sound very nice. <laughs> 